Hello and welcome to mini course. Your gateway to bite sized learning. In today's lesson, I will guide you through the process of developing a research instrument and its fundamental considerations. Let's get started. A research instrument is a tool used by researchers to collect data for their study, including methods like questionnaires, surveys, interviews, and tests. These instruments are designed to gather data systematically and reliably for analysis. When developing a research instrument, the researcher should consider certain issues. The answer to the following questions must give a convincing yes. 1. Validity issue. Will the data to be obtained closely represent the variable under study? 2. Reliability issue. Will the instrument yield similar or associated results when given at different period of time under the same circumstances? An honest-to-goodness thesis writer should make deliberate efforts to ensure the validity and reliability of their research instrument by 1. Reviewing related instruments 2. Consulting experts 3. Conducting dry runs In designing a questionnaire, there is a simple rule of thumb. Larger sample sizes require structured, closed, and numerical questions, while smaller samples allow for more open-ended questions. Closed questions are quick to complete and analyze, but may lack depth. Open questions allow for detailed responses, but are harder to analyze. Considerations include bias, completeness, and coding difficulty. Questionnaires feature various question and response modes, such as dichotomous, multiple choice, rating scales, and open-ended questions. Closed questions are quick and easy to code, but limit respondents' ability to provide detailed explanations. Conversely, open questions allow for free responses, but can be challenging to code and classify. What are the types of questionnaires? Questionnaires can be designed using various types. The choice of the type of questionnaire depends upon the purpose of the research, the type of information sought, and the characteristics of the respondents to it. Structured questionnaire provides a multiple-choice format, as the answers available to the respondent are specified by the researcher. Example. Please check the items corresponding to your answers. A. Single important factor in your choice of buying a mobile phone. Features, brand, performance, model, supplier, others, please specify. Semi-structured questionnaire provides specific questions but allows for open-ended responses, as in the fill-in-the-blank or discussion question approach. This allows the respondent more flexibility in answering the question, but complicates analysis and tabulation of answers. Example 1. Please indicate the single most important factor in your choice of buying a mobile phone. 2. What do you consider a brand as the most important factor in your choice of buying a mobile phone? Unstructured questionnaire provides neither specific questions nor answers. Rather, general topics or topics are discussed in a free-flowing interview session. This requires that the data collection be either personal or online interviews. The approach is more subjective than the structured and semi-structured questionnaires as a great deal of dependency is placed on the interview to prove and uncover relevant data. Thus, a need for highly trained interviewees. The interview starts with a statement from the interviewer such as, let's talk about your choice of buying a mobile phone and proceed with a discussion of the topic. This type of questionnaire is also known as the interview guide or discussion guide. Interview slash or discussion guides. The interview guide acts as a condensed version of a questionnaire, facilitating further exploration by the interviewer. Unlike a questionnaire completed by the respondent, the guide is completed by the interviewer. In qualitative research, Key informant interviews or focus group discussions are often used to gather data not captured by questionnaires. For these methods, researchers create interview or discussion guides containing broad, open-ended questions to extract information from participants. The interviewer or discussion moderator presents each question, allowing respondents to share their ideas, opinions, and feelings on study variables and indicators. Questionnaires commonly use checklists or rating scales to gather responses. Rating scales, such as Likert scales, Gutman scaling, semantic differential scales, and Thurston scales, offer a range of responses, enhancing sensitivity and differentiation while providing numerical data. For example, a Likert scale offers various response options to a question or statement. 
what is the level of satisfaction of XYZ college students about the course they are enrolled in terms of the following? A. School factors. B. Home factors. C. Employability factors. Please rate your favorability towards the following options. Highly favorable. 4. Moderately favorable 3. Lowly favorable 2. Unfavorable 1. Here's an example. Please read. A semantic differential is a variation of a rain scale that operates by putting an adjective at one end of the scale and its opposite at the other, for example. How informative do you consider announcements on the social media of the student services coordinator? Useful 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, useless. The respondent indicates on the scale by circling the position on the scale indicated by a number which most or represents what she or he feels. Observation Guide Example What is the attitude of the salesperson's in XY shop to its shoppers? Reaction of a selected group When the shoppers enter the mall When the shoppers start browsing the items When the shoppers finally decide to buy the item When the shoppers pay for the item When the shoppers leave the shop The observer should, while joining the group, keep out from the group's knowledge that he is studying their attitude. The observation guide would be very helpful in experimental studies. Let's talk about the principles of question formulation. 1. Make questions clear and straightforward by using familiar words. 2. Write questions in a way that does not influence respondents' answers. Avoid the use of connotative words as they make respondents predisposed to the answers. 3. Ask questions that respondents understand and are capable of answering. A question should not require the respondents to recall attitudes and behaviors from the distant past. 4. Provide meaningful options in structured response questions. 5. Always base a questionnaire on research. Questions should be pre-tested for trial use to fine-tune them before actual use in the field. A dry run should be done with respondents who should not be part of the study. What are the things to avoid in question writing? 1. Avoid leading questions, that is, questions that are worded in such a way as to suggest to respondents that there is only one acceptable answer and that other responses might not gain approval or disapproval. 2. Avoid highbrow questions even with sophisticated respondents. 3. Avoid complex questions. Make sentences slash items sample and short. 4. Avoid irritating questions or instructions. 5. Avoid questions that use negatives and double negatives. 6. Avoid too many open-ended questions on self-completion questionnaires. Validation of the research instrument. To ensure the instrument's practicability, validity, and reliability, a pilot study or dry run is essential. This involves administering the questionnaire to a small sample from the same or similar population as the target group. Subjects from the pilot study should be excluded from the actual survey. Pretesting serves various purposes, including checking the questionnaire's clarity, validity, and appropriateness, as well as gathering feedback on layout and response categories. It also helps identify redundant questions, common misunderstandings, and aids in developing coding slash classification systems for data analysis. Validation is imperative for personally constructed questionnaires, ensuring clarity and accuracy. Pretesting involves a small sample, 10 to 15 individuals, from the population to identify vague or ambiguous questions. Retrieving validated questionnaires is crucial, aiming for a 100% success rate. If a questionnaire is borrowed from previous research, validation may not be required, but proper attribution to the original author is essential. In some cases, permission from the original author may be necessary. This ends our lessons on research instruments. I hope this helps you in your research journey. Hit subscribe, like, and share this video. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us in our mini-course, your gateway to bite-sized learning.